Hello, this is um, Unit 5 of the Arduino series of units for uh, CSC270 at Smith College. Um, so in this unit, I'm going to be covering serial communication. So in the previous unit, we looked at uh, parallel communication, how information can be sent all the bits at the same time in parallel on several wires. Serial means you, you only use one wire to send uh, information where the bits are sent one after the other. So if you have to send eight bits, then there will be eight bits one sent one after the other. So it takes, in, in theory, it takes a little longer, but actually um, that's what we're, going, we, we're using now, uh, mostly in computers. Um, uh, for example, USB, the USB ports that you have on your laptop or computer, the S in USB stands for serial, so data is sent serially. And we'll cover that at the end of this unit. So this unit is really divided into two blocks. It's a long unit, so I suggest that you take a break in the middle and stay um, for the first half, where we're going to cover um, the serial communication uh, on the Arduino. And um, the second half is a, a different protocol called I2C, which is found in many, many different um, applications. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to move to my um, iPad. Um, I have uh, several sources of material for you. Um, so uh, Chapter 7 of Programming in C4D Arduino, it's a great book, um, and it uh, deals with the programming of the Arduino. Um, it's uh, open source. I've put the copy on Moodle um, for you. You can go there if you want and download it, or you can follow the link that is here. Um, the Arduino itself, the website, has many very good tutorials and, will co and covers serial communication quite well. And um, the second half of this unit deals with I2C and the wire library is what we're going to be using with the Arduino to uh, communicate over I2C. And there's also a very good reference on the Arduino website. Um, so there are many different serial protocols. So I just want here to cover a particular word or keywords you may find in the literature and um, kind of give you some, some references to that. So USART, USART, you're going to find that when you look at the description of some hardware for microcontrollers. Uh, so USART will indicate that um, that particular device supports serial communication. That's kind of basic serial communication. I2C is more modern, so USART is pretty old, but um, the Arduino supports it. It's a very simple, reliable way of communicating. Uh, I2C is more modern. Um, there's a good, and here you have a, a reference here, you have a good tutorial um, on the Arduino website. Uh, I2C is found in, in many places, as I mentioned previously, SPI and USB. USB, um, consumer electronics, your phone, your, your, your computers, um, your printers um, all support USB in many devices, and um, and the Arduino as well. So um, we'll, we'll look at that uh, very soon. Before I, I move on, um, I want to warn you that some of the terminology we're going to be using and you're going to be reading in documentation um, could be offensive. It's uh, it's uh, all dates back to the beginning of uh, computer science in some ways, but we do when we um, uh, deal with uh, a, a device that controls other devices. The terminology that, I've been, that has been adapted a long time ago is that of master-slave. Uh, one device is the master and uh, will uh, control um, peripherals. So for example, a computer versus a, a printer. And so um, companies and um, computer scientists now are making an effort to change that and not use that terminology. And here is a... Um, document that I've found um, dealing that, that reports that Google um, is telling actually all of its uh, employees to not use this language um, and remove it from code. So you're going to find that also in software, in programming, in documentation. Um, and it refers to this idea of having one device that somehow controls how the information is exchanged between it and other uh, devices. So anyway, um, I will try to use um, controller and, and worker um, as uh, a way of uh, uh, describing this, but you will find that in, in literature. Um, 
So the idea of a serial port is, is linked to, to this. So you're going to recognize here some, um, some things. Um, so here, for example, you will, this, these are three flip-flop, they're D flip-flop. And we've seen them um, at the beginning of the semester. So the D input is uh, right here, the clock input, the Q output, and then whenever we have a signal on the clock um, input that goes from low to high, and that's a transition, then whatever is on D, whatever bit we have here, the zero one, will be latched inside and we'll see it um, on the output. What we have here, these guys that I've shown here are multiplexers. So that's a mux, that's a mux, that's a mux, multiplexers. And um, the wire that is, the, the signal that is right here can be the zero or one. And uh, if it's zero, what it will do, it will add, so let's see if I can highlight that. If it's zero, so let's assume that this signal is zero. So the zero is going to be replicated at the input, at the control input of all the moxes. And so what will happen is that it's whatever is on these wires up here that will be connected to the D input of, um, of the moxes. So let's assume that we have three bits, like zero, one, one. So if load, shift is zero. So we see we put a bar over the load to indicate that if the signal is zero, we're going to be loading. If the signal is one, we're going to be shifting. So a zero will, and, and when the clock ticks, then the bits that um, are up there on the row. So if um, the clock ticks, then this zero will be latched into the flip-flop. So in that case, the zero will appear here, the one will be stored there, and the one will be stored there. And we know with flip-flops that whatever is latched inside will be available on the output. So these bits will, will also be um, coming out directly at the output. And they stay there, so nothing happens on, unless the clock ticks. So if there's only one tick, that's uh, what happens. So now let's assume that the load shift... Um, so let's assume that now load shift is one, so that means that there's a one here, there's a one there, and there's a one here. So what is the path? So now this one allows the zero to go here, allows the Q output to go here, and the Q output of the second flip-flop to go here, and this to go here. So at some point, clock is going to tick again, and so when it ticks a second time, so what we see is that it's a green path that um, will, um, will be taken. So, does, so that at the next tick, because now I have a 1 here, then this zero is going to be latched in here. So I'm going to write that in green. The zero that was coming out here is going to be latched in here. And the one that was waiting here is going to be latched in this flip-flop. So my flip-flop, the contents of the flip-flops will become zero, zero, one. So what we see is that this, we loaded first, we loaded this into the flip-flop. And then by changing this to one, then we allow the contents of the flip-flop to shift into each other. And so um, we had zero, one, one, then it becomes zero, zero, one. Um, so I have a, a quick animation to show how that's gonna work. So let's assume that I want to send the character C uh, uppercase C, which is 0x43 in hexadecimal, or um, 0100, that's 4, and then 0011, that's 3. So the first thing that I will want to do is to present that binary pattern to my uh, shift register. So here I have eight flip-flops. 
So the first time I need the, the top pass, the, 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 the top, the up down blue arrows to uh, be connected to the D input of the flip flop and then I'm going to load them. So I see that now my flip flops contain 0, 1, 0, 0 and then 0, 0, 1, 1. Okay, next step, the clock is going to tick. So the, my clock will have gone, that's the clock, will have gone tick. And by doing that, then uh, it doesn't really matter what comes in on that side. So I'm just putting an X to say that whatever was there has been replaced by something that I don't care about. But you see now that the zero that was there originally has shifted here. The one that I had loaded here has shifted there. So you have somehow I already have shifted everything and this one that was here that was in the flip-flop is now out. Okay, so that's one clock tick and I've shifted the least significant bit. So that is the bit that is here. So first clock tick means LSB, the least significant bit, comes out. Okay, so let's continue the animation. Next clock tick. So now the zero that was here has been shifted all the way here. The one that was here has been shifted all the way here. And the, um, the one that was here are now coming, coming out. So this one that I'm seeing here is actually this guy. So you see second clock tick, then this bit comes out. Third clock tick, the zero comes out. Fourth, zero comes out. And so um, I'm going to stop here, but you can see that this, this is how information is going to be shifted out. All right, um, so shift registers are very common, they're very useful, and manufacturers have uh, put them in um, integrated circuits, similar to the circuits we've used in the first half of the semester. Uh, and here is a 16-pin um, shift register um, labeled 74LS165. And what you're going to see here is that we have our flip-flops. So these are RS flip-flops, but they could be D flip-flops. It was easier to implement that. doesn't really matter because we, um, we only need to know how to utilize it in terms of loading and shifting. Um, and the clock, and so CP stands for clock pulse, and data input is right here. And so we have different ways of, of either clearing the, um, the, the register or shifting and um, this is what is there. So it's a little complicated, but we see that up here, these are the bits that we can load in parallel into the flip-flop. So there's a way of loading them directly in parallel all at once. And then the, um, the data can be shifted out this way, coming out there. So what will it look like um, typically when, if I were to put an oscilloscope on a wire where information is sent serially, what would I see? Well, um, typically, if nothing is being set, the, wire, the, the voltage is going to be high, so that's high voltage. So for the Arduino, it's typically 5 volt. For other, um, other protocols, it's a different voltage, but high voltage means nothing is, is happening. Then when the, 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 the byte is being sent, Typically, we send the first a bit, one bit just that is zero, which indicates that something is, is starting. So this is called the start bit. It's just to tell the receiver that, hey, you should wake up because uh, I'm sending you a collection of, of bits. So we always send a zero first. It's called the start bit. And then we're going to have the data bit. So we saw that B0, the least significant bit, is going to be sent first. So either one or zero, I'm going to show both level, it's either one or the other, depending on what is being sent. And then B1, B2, B3, B4, B5, B6, B7, and that's it. So that's a byte. Then no B8. I was going too fast here. Okay, so these are my data bits. And then at the end, um, what I need to do is that I need to close the communication and there's always a bit equal to one called the stop bit. So it's not the data bit, it's just a protocol bit, control bit that is set and there's only one of them. And that's the way um, a byte is going to be sent. So it's just sent by itself. There's no clock signal 
set. So it's an asynchronous protocol, no clock. But the sender and the receiver have to have an idea of how fast and how long the bits last so that they, the receiver can know when to sample, when to look at the line to see when the next bit up. Could all, not the bit, well, the bits, the data bits will not always be different. So it could be that if I send a byte that is filled with zeros, for example, then the voltage is going to stay low for the, the value of 8 bits. So um, just the bit by themselves it will not contain any information about the speed that they sent out. So um, that's what we're going to be uh, seeing. So I've done this experiment. What I've um, done is I, I created, um, uh, and you're going to see that in the demo, I have a, an Arduino sending a, the same character, ASCII character, to another Arduino over and over and over, and I put an oscilloscope on one of the wires connecting the two so that I can look at what the data looks like. And that's what I found. So here is our waveform, and that's the start bit right here. That's the least significant bit, and then all the other bits. So you see here this is 1, 0, 1, 0, and then 1, 1, 1, 0, and then the stop bit at the end, and then nothing happens for a while, and because I have a little delay in my loop, and then this is going to happen again. So, um, so that's let's try to figure out what the character that I'm sending is. So that's why I have this little bar so that we can write uh, here. I'm going to use this color. So that I know is the stop, and I have one zero, one zero, one one one. Zero. So that's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and here is my stop bit. Okay, so um, I'm going to flip these bits around because that's the least significant bit. It's right here, the LSB, and that's the most significant bit. MSB. So um, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. That's the byte that I'm sending in binary, and that I know is 0x7. So this is 7, and this is 5. So 75. So if I look in the ASCII table for the character that is equivalent to 75, that has a code of 75 hexadecimal, I find that it's lowercase u. So that's what my program was sending, it was lowercase u here. All right, if, and if you also want to figure out um, what, um, what speed I had selected, was it 9600 baud, so I'll come to that very soon, 9600 baud or some other speed of transfer of data bits, well, what we can do is we can um, look at this value that says the, the, the space between divisions on the screen is 200 microseconds. So this 200 microsecond means that this is 200 microseconds. So if we, um, if we look at the number of bits that are sent, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So let's take a look at how long this is in number of divisions. So it's one division pretty much. I'm going to approximate 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's a little bit over um, 5, so I would say maybe 5.5 divisions. So 10 bits will take 200 microsecond times 5.5, which is 1.1 um, millisecond. So that's how long it's going to take me to send one byte. So um, from that, I can infer um, the connection, the, um, the, the speed. So that means that's for 10 bits. 1 bits would be 0 0.11 millisecond. That's for 1 bit. So if I take the inverse of that, uh, I'm going to find um, the transmission speed, and then the 600 baud is what I should find. All right, what are the different transmissions transmission speed. So, well, what we use uh, typically is um, 9600, but we see that there are many others uh, available, and as high as um, 
115,200. So we've seen that, that before. So that, so this is a table showing the baud rate, the, the available baud rate. We have a choice as a programmer. Uh, we have a choice when we connect um, two devices using a serial port. At, we have a choice of the speed at, at which they're going to communicate. So ideally, of course, we would like the speed to be as fast as possible, so we don't spend much time in communication. But um, the risk is that when the transfer is too fast, is that some bits may be corrupted by electrical noise or uh, different things. So having a slower speed, if we can, is going to be more reliable in general. So we're not going to lose information. So that's why we're going to pick 9600, because it's pretty safe for communication. So that's the, oops. That's the baud rate, standard baud rate. All right. So, um, so that was for serial communication in, in, in general. Uh, so MIDI communication. MIDI, for those of you who play music, um, is a standard for controlling different devices that will play music or record music. Um, so it's also serial, so I'm putting it here because it is uh, serial communication and two wires pl plus ground. It was conceived in 1981, so that's pretty old. Uh, computers have evolved tremendously, so <clears throat> this MIDI system works pretty well, but it's pretty slow. So um, if you have many devices controlled by a computer using MIDI, you may find that the, the, the communication, serial communication is slow enough that there may be some slight difference, maybe a millisecond or more, between the time a sound is going to start on one device compared to the, the next device. When would, you would send the same command to both um, musical instruments to start playing at the same time, then because it's serial and you're doing one after the other, there may be milliseconds of, of delay. So some people are not terribly happy with that. We have other options, but that's a standard that is um, quite still uh, used and that you'll find out there. Um, so it's used to control musical instruments. The information is sent uh, as packets of bytes. And in these packets, you're gonna uh, be able to define what note, the pitch, the velocity, the duration, the vibrato, a lot of things about one single note. And it's sent serially from a controller to the different uh, devices. So MIDI is an important um, serial communication used in the world of, of music. So now um, I'm going to do and I'm going to show you an example of how we can program two Arduinos to talk to each other using the serial port. So um, the serial port is a, a three, we need three wires. So um, information is going to be transmitted uh, from one Arduino. So there's going to be a TX so um, TX is for transmit. So that those three wires we're going to need transmit. RX is going to mean receive. So there's going to be a wire on which we receive information from the other devices. So we see that it's a it's a full duplex connection. And then we need ground. We always need ground. We need a way for information to uh, to come back. So TX, RX, and ground. Are the three wires that we, we need. It's pretty pretty simple actually to connect to implement uh, serial communication and I have an example here. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that but I have two Arduinos and three wires connecting them. That's it and that's enough for me to do have one talk to the other and send information. Um, so the, 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 the mega that we are using in, in class actually has four serial ports. So we could actually connect it to four different devices and have four different types of serial communication. Um, serial zero is the one that is used by the USB connector. So the USB connector, uh, I'm gonna show that. So, you know, this actually is connected to serial zero. So in general, we're not going to use serial zero uh, for our own connection to other devices because it's going to be used as either as power to power um, our Arduino from a, a USB cable or for programming it and getting information to the serial monitor. So usually serial zero uh, we don't use because it's, it's used by the USB connection. But we have three that we can use, serial one, serial two, and serial three. And the pin numbers are here. So we, 
very simply, and we'll see them labeled. You'll see on the little board, we'll see where the different um, serial ports are. Um, so I don't see them right now, but oh yeah, they, they're around here. So if you see around here, that's where you'll see TX1, RX1, and so on. So um, it's very simple. Here is the, um, the way we're going to organize ourselves. So ground, so see I have a ground here, and I'm connecting it to the ground of the other Arduino. Always do that, maybe do that first. And then, so in orange here is the receive wire. So it's, I'm going to connect it to the transmit wire of the other one. So always cross when you have a serial communication. TX is going to be connected to RX and TX here is going to be connected to RX. We'll always cross. And so the blue here, the blue wire C starts from the RX one of this Arduino and is connected to the TX one of the other Arduino. So remember that we need to, to cross these wires and uh, maybe I can um, Illustrate that. Let's assume that I have my two Arduino. So Arduino 1, Arduino 2, TX1 is going to be connected to RX1, and RX1 is going to be connected to TX1, and of course ground connected to ground always. And I'm going to put this little symbol here to indicate that that's the ground. So um, we have this, uh, this switch. Okay, so that the, the programming is going to be fairly simple. Um, so let's take a look at the um, this example that I have. So in this example, um, I have a sender. So that's the sketch for the sender right here. It's going to send a character to. So the the the, the direction is from the sender to the receiver. So it's going to send a character which starts at A, and then in the loop, every time I've sent one character, I increment it. So that means I go to the next one in the ASCII table. So A is going to become B, is going to become C, and when I reach Z, when I've just sent Z, I go back to A. So the sender is going to send A, B, C, all the way up to Z, then A, B, C, and so on. So that's what the sender is going to do. And then um, the receiver, which is right here, actually has two serial connection. One, serial one, so that's what is going to be allowing it to connect to the serial one of, of the other. Uh, oh, so um, serial one, so the two are going to be connected through serial one. I'm going to use the regular serial here to talk to the serial monitor. So that's my serial monitor. We've used it before. And so the receiver is going to receive the character from the sender and display it on the serial monitor. So that's why it needs two serial connections. The receiver has a serial connection to the sender and it has a serial connection to the USB port so it can output information on the serial monitor on our laptop. So, so that's why this guy has, is initializing two serial communication and see this word is serial one, this one is serial. So serial by default means the USB on the Arduino. Serial one is one that we are using. Um, so that's what I need to do in the setup. I need to initialize the communication. I'm going to pick 9600 baht because it's standard. It's low enough that I, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to lose information. So uh, I'm using actually both 9600 for both connections here. The, um, the, the receiver is going to print something on a serial monitor just to say that it's starting. It's just a, a friendly... Um, display of information on the serial monitor so we'll know that our receiver has started. And then they're doing something interesting, both of them. They're both going to use the LED on board, pin 13, which is the onboard LED, and they're going to, whenever they either send or receive a character, they're going to take the least significant bit of that character and they're going to put it on the LED. So if you think about the characters in the um, ASCII table, they, they have codes that follow each other. For example, A is 41 hexadecimal, B is 42, C is 43, D is 44, and so on. So you see that the least significant bit of characters that follow each other, the least significant bit changes. So A, the least significant bit, 41, is 1. B, 0. C, 1. 
D0. So by, se by setting the LED to the least significant bit of the character that is the center received, then I'm going to see, the, normally, during normal operation, I should see the LEDs flash. And they should flash in synchrony. So that's what I'm doing here. So this pin mode 13 output that both of them do is to activate the LED. And so let's take a look at what the, um, the sender is going to do. So in the loop, it's going to wait a second. So it's going to send one byte, one character per second. So 9600 is how fast the bits are going to go, but it waits one second between sending these. Uh, and then serial one write C, that's a way of writing a character to the serial port. If I've reached Z, I reset the character to A, otherwise I increment it by one. So in C, you can add one to a character and it becomes the next character in the ASCII table. And then I'm going to digital write to pin 13. So CN1 is a way of isolating the least significant bit of um, C. So let's uh, figure this out. So if C is the character A, that's 0x41, so that's 01000001. If I end that with 1, 1 in binary is this. And if I end, that's 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So you see that I'm isolating the least significant bit by adding, and I'm going to set the LED to tap. All right, let's take a look at what the receiver has to do in the loop. What it has to do, and that's the standard way of, of writing uh, a receiver, you're going to say as long as, so while, serial one dot available, as long as there's something to receive, I'm going to receive. I'm not going to assume that there's only one character there. It's possible that the sender is also going to send many at, at the same time. So in the loop, you want the loop to be fast enough to absorb everything. So while there's something coming uh, and available on serial one, I'm going to serial one read. I'm going to read that, char that character. I'm going to put it into a byte. I'm going to print it as a character on the, that's a serial monitor. So that's what we're seeing right here. I'm seeing the characters being printed, and you see that's the alphabet, and then when I've printed Z, I go back to A, and then I'm printing that, and then digital write 13 byte and 1, so I'm doing the same thing at the receiving end, I'm taking the least significant bit of the character I've received, and I'm displaying it. So it's kind of a way of checking, if, if the LEDs were not flashing at the same time in synchrony, something, some information would have been lost. All right, so I have a demo, um, it's right here, so you should be able to click on that or just copy that and go there. So I recommend that you watch it now. And when you're done, um, have a cup of coffee. Okay, so I'm going to look now at another serial protocol called I2C. So the Arduino supports many different communication protocols, different ways of com communicating, and I2C is an other, other one. So it is serial, but it's different from what we've just seen. What we've just seen is having RX and TX pins, uh, four groups of them, for doing simple serial communication with other devices that have similar pins, typically other Arduinos. But here, I2C is kind of a general purpose uh, serial protocol, and a lot of sensors, um, a lot of devices support it. So that's uh, um, a way of... Uh, exchanging information that has become a standard. And um, your phone, for example, your phone has many different um, sensors uh, in terms of, uh, you know, you have a compass, you have accelerometer in here, um, there's, there's sound, there's a microphone, um, and, and pl plenty of uh, GPS, uh, plenty of devices, and then you have a processor that is in charge of controlling all of this. So one, uh, on many phones, the bus, the, the, the connection that exists between the processor and all these different devices is I2C. So that's what we're going to look at now, and it's great that Arduino supports it because that means that a lot of these devices that are built for consumer electronics will be also available for the Arduino. Um, so the features of I2C, it's serial communication over a bus. We're going to see what that means. It goes pretty fast, so 100 kilohertz is standard, 100,000 bits per second. Um, compare that to 9600 baud, not, not, not 9600 9, bits per second, so faster, and can go all the way up to 3.4 megahertz, 
so 3.4 million bits per second so that's you know, very fast communication that's possible but you need to have a processor that is fast enough to support that uh, it's a three wire protocol also so one for transmit one for receive and one for ground um, and it's the way it works is there's one controller and many peripherals many devices or workers and the number of workers is typically 127 in some cases you can go for higher than that but typically it's 127 and that's a lot if you think of a phone you don't have 127 different um, sensors in there but in cars you, you may have you have, you have sensors in, in the wheels in the brakes um, temperature and, and all can so um, I2C is also used um, in automotive um, and it's one-to-one -one communication so you have one manager with many workers and they all are hooked up on the same the same two wires very interesting you just so that's why we say it's a bus you just have these three wires of receive transmit and ground and then you can connect as many sensors on that and so the protocol um, that is used allows the, the, the manager to access one particular device using an address so each device has a unique address and that is set on the, the bus the device that recognizes its address now is going to be responding to the manager and it's going to be one-to-one -one after that initial uh, communication uh, phase and it, it does automatically automatic error correction so if something gets lost it's clever the protocol is clever enough there's a layer of software that will reinitiate communication so we don't have to worry about that um, when we program in our sketch the, the error detection correction is going to be part of the library it's going to be done automatically which is great um, so I2C around us I've just mentioned um, that so video one I'm going to ask you to watch this video now it's four minutes yeah so that here you can see better the, um, the slide so I'm going to ask you to watch uh, this video it's four minutes if you want to take a little break and do that later that's fine you're in charge of your own time um, and then there's the 10 minute video that I can also ask you to um, to watch and I think with these two they do a, a very good job and I don't want to, re to repeat something that has been done that is quite um, quite good um, don't worry too much they're going to talk about um, the pull-up resistors so uh, it's just that we need to have resistors um, uh, added but you know the Arduino actually the Arduino contains these resistors they're already on board so we don't have to worry when we okay so um, uh, recapitulation for uh, I2C now that you've watched the video the, the two extra videos the way the communication is initiated is that you first need to get the address of the device you need to communicate with so you need to to know ahead of time as a programmer the address of all your different devices and some of them will come pre-configured with a particular address so you need to get that usually the data sheet will tell you um, and and some of these devices have several different sensors like um, an accelerometer may have three registers for one direction of movement another direction of movement or, or um, the third one so you may have different registers in there so you need to know their address as well so there's a little bit of work that you have to do there but when we, we know that um, whenever you you want to to communicate oops let me undo that whenever you want to communicate what um, you have to do is to initiate the communication with the device by specifying its address um, and then you read or write from the device from different registers and you indicate how many bytes you want or uh, how many bytes you're going to send some devices will receive information from the controller and then you close the communication so it's like open data exchange close which is if you think about it very similar in Linux when you deal with files or devices you open the file you read or write from the file and then you close the file and the next time you have to um, play with that file you do go through the same thing again so with the um, mega 2560 which is the one um, device we have um, to to con connect them together is very simple uh, what you do here and I, I want you to notice that it's, it's going to be slightly different from what we had before is that the, so the two signals are called SDA for data and SCL for clock. So it's slightly different from the serial communication that is native to the, the Arduino. Here there's only there's one data line for the bits and one clock. So it's a synchronous. So now we have a different um, communication mode. It's synchronous. 
uh, I2C in the sense that it sends the data end o'clock. So the, 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 the receiver and the sender have the same clock and they know when the bits start and, and stop when they uh, transmit it. So you see that um, the SDA here is connected to the orange wire and the orange wire goes to the SDA on the other side. So you connect data to data on the two Arduinos for I2C. You connect clock to clock and ground to ground. So it's one to one. There's no uh, swapping. All right, and I have a demo of this, uh, a video demo. So I'm going to ask you to uh, watch it now. And I'm going to bring this up. Um, so that's um, the video. You have the link um, there. It's also available on the class uh, schedule page. You can find that there. Um, all right, so welcome back. Um, now, very briefly, I will talk, talk, tell you about the USB uh, serial port. So the S in USB stands for serial communication. Um, and it's one that you've seen, that you've been using, um, and it has different, um, different kinds of, um, of format. So that's the A uh, connector, that's the B connector, and C is the new one. And some of you have that on their uh, laptop, which makes it kind of tricky to connect an Arduino to your laptop. But anyway, um, what is interesting is that um, it was it's still fairly old as well, but it has gone through several, several evolutions. So there's USB 1, USB 2, USB 3, and every time there's a new USB, typically it's faster, it allows more data to be transferred um, in some fixed amount of time. Um, what is interesting is that there's two wires for data, data plus and data minus, and it's the difference between the voltages on these two wires that will indicate what the bits are. So it's interesting. The, the information is set between two uh, wires. There's a ground, so that's ground, and there's plus 5 volt. So, um, which is great because uh, the, the USB protocol says when you have a USB cable, you should be able to carry 5 volt between ground and, and, and plus. And that's why we can have chargers that um, can charge phones and different devices. So it can be fairly um, high speed. Um, and it has, it has a whole, so several layers of software. Let me shoot. Um, and uh, it, it, data is exchanged into packets. And um, it, it does use some form of acknowledge. So when data is being sent, then the receiver will, um, will acknowledge your reception. So that's, but when we program it, the good thing is that when we program it, we don't have to deal with all these de details. The interface makes it very easy to open a connection, send some, some data, and then close the connection. And we assume that that information somehow is going to get to its destination. All right, and um, that's it. So what I would suggest you do is, again, I think it's a good idea to review the slide. If there's anything that doesn't make sense, go back. Um, what are the things that you should remember? Um, so serial communication is now the standard um, for exchanging information between computers and devices. So it's good to have, this is a long unit, but it's good to spend the time to understand what um, it, it entails. USB is uh, omnipresent in consumer electronics, I2C in different industries, in including automotive, aerospace, phone, uh, consumer electronics, and they're all easy to program. Um, the libraries really hide a lot of the complexity, and so for us, it's going to be fairly, um, fairly simple to, uh, to deal with. All right, that's the end of this unit. Um, I'll see you for uh, unit six.